I recently created a snake-like game using floating point arithmetic. That means both the snake and the food can have arbitrary coordinates in 2D space and are not bound to a grid. When you now want an artificial intelligence to control the steering of the snake, making it find the food efficiently and avoid biting itself, simple pathfinding algorithms can become really complicated. Therefore, I used a neural network combined with a genetic algorithm to train it to approach this challenge. Visual cells of the snake serve as inputs to the network. The visual field of the snake is plus minus 120 degrees wide and split into 16 sectors in total. The snake can see three different types of objects, the wall, itself and food. Hence there are 48 input neurons. The closer an object is to the head of the snake, the higher is the stimulation of the neuron. This data is then fed through a three-stage neural network. Each neuron calculates the sum of the outputs of the previous layer neurons weighted by constant coefficients of the network. It then applies a nonlinear activation function to this sum to determine the neuron's output intensity. At the end, the difference between the outputs of the last two neurons is directly used as the steering direction of the snake. As activation function in each neuron, a classical logistic sigmoid function is used. This type of activation function is very common in neural networks because of its useful properties for backpropagation. However, backpropagation is not used in this case to train the network. Instead, in order to find optimal values for the coefficients of the network, a genetic algorithm is applied. Genetic algorithms try to find an optimal solution for a problem iteratively by recombining and mutating existing candidates. Here the candidates are snakes. At any point in time, there's a fixed number of snakes alive. Each snake is unique by its DNA, which stores the coefficients of the neural network and therefore determines its behavior. Additionally, another byte is stored for the color of the snake, to spot inheritance easily. In total, for snakes with the 48 16, 16, 2 network structure, the DNA strand is a 1091 byte long array. As snakes die due to biting itself in the tail, crashing into a wall or starvation, the population of the snakes will drop. To counteract, each time a snake dies, the algorithm will choose two snakes at random as parents for a new snake. In the parent selection process, a snake with a higher fitness value will have a larger probability to become chosen than a snake with a lower fitness. The fitness of a snake is calculated as a function of its current size and its hunger. To generate the new DNA, the both DNA arrays of the parent snakes are crossed over. The DNA strand is cut at random locations and then put back together, alternating between parent A and parent B. Notable here is that the crossover process is done bitwise, so cuts may happen even in the middle of a byte changing its value vastly. However, the amount of diversity is limited by the DNA of the snakes in the very first generation, which is seeded completely at random. The probability that all parts of the optimal DNA are present in the very first generation is quite low. That's why mutation helps in this kind of evolution. Here, the mutation is implemented as randomly flipping bits in the DNA array during the copying procedure. The rate at that these wanted errors occur can be a constant, or in this case inversely proportional to the fitness of the best snake currently alive. That means, when the snakes perform quite bad at survival, the mutation will happen more frequently and thus add more variety to the behavior of the next generation. Let's have a look at an example in the simulation. The graph in the bottom left of the screen shows the maximum fitness of the snakes currently alive. Notable is also that most snakes have the quirk of circling around in one direction. This is due to the very random coefficients in the first few generations. 
Also, it is important to say that the snakes cannot interact or collide with each other. They only share the same food. Now we've reached the point where somewhat intelligent snakes have been born. Let's watch the currently best snake performing alone and look at its neural network in real time. In this debug view, the neural network is visualized. Neuron stimulation is shown as the brightness of the neuron. The synapses are displayed as colored lines. Red means a negative or inhibiting coefficient, green means a positive or stimulating coefficient. The thickness of the line represents the absolute value of the coefficient. Since snakes become slower the longer they get, at some point there will be no more noticeable improvement and progress stops due to starvation. Before I end this presentation, I want to express thanks to the YouTube channel Computerfile, especially for the videos about neural networks with Michael Pound from Nottingham University, and to Daniel Schiffman from Coding Rainbow for the video series about genetic algorithms. You can find links to both in the video description. Thank you for watching.